Okay, we've got a heat transfer example problem here. In this problem, we're going to use Fourier's law when given a temperature profile or a temperature distribution to, to also calculate a flux distribution or a flux profile. So, this problem states that if we have a solid rectangular block with the temperature profile given by this equation, the temperature as a function of x, y, and z is equal to 40x squared times y plus 3 times natural log of y plus 2.5 times x times z. If we know the thermal conductivity, we want to develop expressions for the flux in each of those directions, x, y, and z. And then we also want to put all of those uh, different flux components together to comprise the entire vector, which would have both magnitude and direction. So basically what we're asking is, let's say we have a big solid block of stuff, solid material. That might look something like this. So we would be looking at a temperature map with this equation. So let's say somewhere within here at some given um, x, y, and z, we would be able to use this equation to tell us what the temperature is. So this, someone may have determined this empirically, they may have taken measurements, this may be something from a model of some kind. Really, this is sort of just an arbitrary temperature distribution, but this is the type of scenario that you might be dealing with. So at that particular point, because temperature is varying and it's nonlinear, we would expect flux to vary. So at that particular point, we might have different flux, um, Vector. So there would be an x component to the flux. There would be a y component to the flux. And there would also be a z component to the flux. And then to put them all into a single vector, we would um, use these unit vectors. And that would give us both magnitude and direction. So each of these individual components would give us the magnitude in that particular direction, but it doesn't tell the entire story about how flux is moving. And then because we expect flux to be a function of x, y, and z, we might actually see different magnitudes of flux depending on where we are within the solid. So you could actually map this out in terms of temperature, but also in terms of flux. So what we're going to do here to get this is we're going to apply Fourier's law, which states that flux, the flux vector is equal to minus k times the gradient of our temperature. So to calculate the gradient of our temperature, we are going to, this breaks down into um, x, y, and z components. So we're going to have a dt dx component, and that's going to be in the i direction, where i is the unit vector, going in just this x direction, plus dt dy in the j direction. Similarly, dt dy would give us the magnitude, uh, j would give us the direction, so this would only be going in the y direction, plus the partial of t with respect to z in the k direction. So we're going to take this temperature profile and we are going to differentiate it and break it down so we can calculate flux in each direction. Okay, so I've got our temperature profile on here just as a reminder. So our flux in the x direction is going to be minus k times dt dx. So we're going to differentiate this temperature profile, so we have minus k, and then we need to differentiate this temperature profile with respect to x. So first, this first term would give us 80 times x times y. The second term is not a function of x, so it just gives us 0. And then this last term would give us 25, sorry, 2.5 multiplied by z. So that's actually our inner x component, our y component, we do the same thing. But with respect to y, so here we have minus k times the derivative of this first term with respect to y is just 40x squared. The second term 
is 3 over y. The derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y, and then we carry the 3 through. And then this last term is not a function of y, so it has no y component from that last term. Finally, the z term minus k times the partial with respect to z equals minus k. And there is no, no z component here, no z component here. There's only one here. So that is 2.5 times x. OK, so now we just need to compile. So actually, this answers a, b, and c. Um, we get the magnitude in each of those directions, and then we'll put them all into a vector. So we get the entire magnitude and, and direction of our system. And that is not just the z direction, it's all directions. So here we have minus k times 80xy plus 2.5 times z multiplied by the i unit vector. We have minus k times 40x squared plus 3 over y in the j direction. And then finally, we have minus k times 2.5x in the k direction. So that is how we take something, a temperature profile of a three-dimensional solid, and knowing the thermal conductivity of that solid, we can also figure out how flux is varying, both in terms of direction and magnitude.